Hi, I'm Nick Bonner for TreeStuff.com. We're here on the Micro Rigging Lab with Jamie Shambrelli. Jamie? How are you doing today, Nick? Oh, welcome. Yeah, thanks for coming. Jamie's a CTSP as well as a Connecticut licensed arborist, a certified arborist. You're a trainer with Arbor Master. Correct. So a, a lot of rigmarole, a lot of experience. Yeah. yeah. We're going to talk today about rigging long limbs over houses, some of the forces that are involved, um, and just some of the concepts. It looks like we might be talking about a butt catch here. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's take it away, and you know, you do your thing. I might stick around and ask a few questions. Yeah, no problem. All right. So uh, here's a scenario that we got. We got this long limb over the house here, and our drop zone is pretty limited because we got only about this much space between the trunk and the tree. So what I've done here is I've double whipped this line and I've taken one part of line that we would normally um, lower on and I changed it into two parts. So now when I have to lift this piece to get it off the house, I'll have uh, two parts of line and I'll be creating a mechanical advantage. I've also uh, created a progress capture here with a prusik so that when I do lift, I'll have the ability to stop at any point read the cut, and I'll be able to work the piece up nice and slow. The reason that I'm doing this is because Nick, my ground guy, forgot to put our second porter wrap on the truck today. So my two progress captures are gonna have to switch back and forth because I don't have the opportunity to come into more than one lowering device at a time. Uh, I have a butt catch here. Uh, also go into a progress capture so that I can switch that at any time. And that's going to stop this from swinging off and out once Correct. it comes off the cut, which I imagine will be somewhere around here. Yeah, the cut's going to be right in here. What we're going to do is we're going to put in uh, about a, I'd say a 50 degree face notch here, and we're going to come from the back. We're going to create a 10% hinge, and we're going to lift nice and slow on that 10% hinge on the piece. Explain to me why we go through the process of adding in these extra pulleys. It seems like I could just come from here straight to here and not have another point that I have to climb to, another piece of gear to retrieve. Why? So I'm taking a redirect here um, because one thing that I don't want to do is create a 180 degree turn because at that point I'm creating a mechanical advantage. So by deflecting the line out, I'm actually decreasing the load on the block here at the, uh, at the terminal rigging point. And if we open that uh, angle up to 120, we have potential to bring it back to one to one versus the block seeing double the weight of the piece because we created that mechanical advantage there. So similar thing here, this angle is kind of wide, which is I think more to illustrate it than anything. Correct. If we tighten this angle down, we actually increase the mechanical advantage in our lift here. Very true. The tighter that this is together and the less deflection that we have in the line, the less angle that it's open, the more mechanical advantage we're going to create. Because every time we take a full 180 degree turn back pointed at the load, we're creating mechanical advantage. Okay. Another question that I have is, why would we attach out here? This wood is smaller. It's, you know, it, obviously to me, it makes a little more sense to, you know, why wouldn't you come here where it's bigger and you have more purchase on it? Well, what we're trying to do here is really balance this limb out. So we need to make the head weight here match the butt weight here so that when we do lift, we're gonna have a steady calm motion and we're not gonna get some kind of um, you know, racking or, or major movement on the piece. So what we've done here is we've I've cow hitched it here and then I supported it here. Now had I had a longer rope, I might have come further into the piece to secure it better if I was lifting and I did have some kind of breakage so that the piece was caught. But I mean, making your decision on where you're tying this rope you need to be thinking about is the is the limb that I'm tying to going to support the lift that I'm trying to make. And it's not always going to be about trying to get out as far as you possibly can because you need to make sure that you have the head space to stand it up. So even if it's strong out to here, you might not want to tie out here because you're not going to be able to get it to stand all the way up, right? Very true. Very true. Awesome. And when we lift here, it looks like we're going to come just touching tip above the block there and we should be completely vertical at that point. So. Well, let's see it. Let's cut it and yeah, let's, let's see what happens. It. I'm going to come around to the other side of the tree. Okay. And I'll be your groundsman. Here's your saw. Oh, thank you. You should be able to put a nice notch in with this uh, straight blade. All right. So everybody stand clear. All right. We got our cones out. We've got a good work zone. Which rope should I have on the porter wrap first? Um, I don't think we need either either on the porter wrap immediately. Um, this one here, we might want to pull in and pre-tension the butt line slightly. So if you could pull in on that, that'd be helpful. There we go. That seems pretty good. And this line, I already pre-tensioned a bit. We could pull in on that as well. There we go. That's good right there. All right, so I'll stand clear. I'm going to put my face notch in the piece. 
All right, so I'm in a nice clean face notch there, no bypass in it. And one thing that we wanna make sure is when we're making that face notch so we don't have bypass in the corners or overcut, because as soon as we start to lift a piece, we'd be failing our hinge immediately. It would be just like putting a snap cut in the piece. As soon as the two planes of the face notch meet, the hinge would start to fail on us and we don't wanna lose this prematurely over the house. So stand clear, I'm gonna start the back cut and we'll start to take a look at what happens with this piece. One of the nice things about having the model that's this big, I think, is that we're able to really get up close, able to look at it. You know, when we do demo trees, which are awesome, I think there's a lot of times where you spend a lot of time talking about suspending the, the belief of climbing and you focus more on the climbing than on the, the rigging techniques and the angles. So it's, I think it's really awesome to have this model and be able to do this repeatedly and put the limbs back on and stuff. I'm just about where I want to be with my hinge, so I'm going to take some tension in on this line and see what happens with the piece and see if it doesn't start to stand up for me slightly. Okay, and I see that this piece is getting ready to break on the hinge, so I'm going to tighten up this butt line as well. And I come in with it. Oh, hang on, the project capture is a little hung up. And I come in on my butt line slightly, make sure I got it nice and tight. And there we go. So now I lifted it off the house, but now what do we do? Well, now I gotta get it down, right? So I'm gonna come into the Porter app, and what that's gonna do is, I mean, these prusticks are gonna be under high tension now, right? Because we had the weight there. So this is gonna work similar to how we work in climbing systems, like a rope wrench. If we take some of that friction out of the prusik above it, with the porter wrap below it, we'll be able to put our wraps on, and then work this prusik out nice and loose. So now, yep, yeah, I can stop here, I can take my prusik off, And now I'm just in the Porter app, so I'll be able to lower the piece down. So as I start to lower down, I'll Nick pull that out, take a little wrap off here, and we'll come down nice and smooth with it. And every homeowner's in the window right now watching, right? And then as soon as... Sure. Oh, well, we had the piece completely over and in the drop zone. Well, um, well go ahead. Well, I mean, it depends on what the drop zone looks like, how big this piece is. I mean, this is not all entirely to scale. I think that that, that kind of goes. So, you know, you could cut this piece out as it came down. Um, or, you know, if it was just a piece of brush, you know, you could drag it out. Well, you know, if you got an anchor point out there too, you can use the same principle that we're doing here with a block and a pulley on the anchor point and put a progress capture on that line. So when you put your 200 pounds of input into the line, you're capturing that and you're holding that tag line there. So it's not like you're leaning into the rope, fatiguing yourself the entire time. And then again, it's all gonna depend, how big is this limb? How much force are you putting on it? You know, is this the right direction? I was really just trying to pull it out so it would lay down. But uh, you know, Jamie, thank you. I think you, you showed us a lot of good techniques and uh, there were a couple things in here, right? We had progress captures, mm -hmm. a butt catch. We talked about double whip tackle, you know, the act of just generally using mechanical advantage to stand the limbs up. So, you know, I think this is pretty useful stuff and I, I hope the people that watch this uh, on the web uh, can definitely get some, some benefit out of it. Thanks, great, Nick. Thank yeah, you for thank having you me, Thank you so much. Yeah. Cheers. Have a good day, guys.